Welcome back to the channel. Sorry it's been a few weeks since I posted anything, but I've been away the past couple of weekends. First I was in the mountains scouting some fall color spots, and then I was on the Georgia coast trying to shoot a rocket launch. This is a follow-up video to one I posted a few weeks ago. One of the steps in my workflow needs a bit of clarification, and I wanted to take a chance to explain a, a basic principle of image processing. The workflow I use, the steps that I follow, the programs, actions, and filters are what works for me. They may or may not work for you. It's up to you as the photographer, the artist, to find that combination that works best. There's rarely one right way to do things in photo editing. Typically, there are multiple different techniques to achieve a similar or even the same result. I'm not saying that the way I do it is the way it has to be done just that it's the way I found works best for me. A few weeks ago I posted a video that went through the process of using AI noise reduction in Lightroom before you stack images. Part of that process had me applying lens correction at that point. However, best practice and in fact the documentation for Starry Landscape Stacker advise against doing lens correction before stacking. The problem that's created can be an odd pattern in the center of your final image. And often it won't be visible until you throw it over to Photoshop and start doing some heavy editing there. At that point, if it shows up, you basically have to start all over again. Now, since I began using DxO's Pure Raw a few months ago, I noticed that the issue wasn't quite as bad, and I could get away with applying that lens correction either there or in Lightroom. However, it still can happen, and I actually found an image recently that was affected by it. This is the image fully processed after I went back and omitted the lens correction. And this is the image with a partial process that had DxO's Pure Raw 5 run at the beginning. You can see an odd circular pattern in the center and there's really no way to edit around it. You can see these ridges here. The more you edit, the more it's going to come out. Now this is the same issue right out of stacking and as you can see it's really not that noticeable. I only had four shots available for this set. So back in 2023, when they were captured, I really didn't pay much attention to them. But with AI noise reduction, I decided to run through them. Now my tripod moved in the middle of the sequence, which left me with less shots than I normally would have. You can't really tell from this image, but I was on the edge of an inlet and the sand was very soft and there were waves washing in all around me. The choice to apply lens correction or not is like dozens of choices that I make throughout the editing process. Sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. So my point is don't get too locked in to a rigid step-by-step -step process. It's a workflow. Emphasis on the flow part. Now I'm going to go through the process without lens correction so you can see what it looks like. And I'm going to use three images that were shot the same night as the other ones where I was actually able to stand perfectly still for over a minute. As always, we begin in the develop module and I'm going to change to adaptive color and reduce my exposure down to about minus 115. Looks good. I'm going to change my white balance to auto and actually cool it down just a little bit more. That's too far. And I'm going to add just a little bit more magenta. Now down to my details tab where I'm going to enable denoise and this will take a couple of minutes for the system to go in and evaluate the image and run denoise. There we go. So I've got some sharpening in. I'm going to zoom in to check to see if maybe I've got just a little bit too much denoise cranked in. I'm going to drop it back a little bit and I'm going to reduce the sharpening just a little bit. And now I'm going to go back up to my basic panel and apply some local edits using masking. Now ordinarily I would choose landscape. But one of the things I've noticed is when you use landscape AI in Lightroom, if you've got a lot of waves that change throughout the sequence of shots, it can cause a little bit of problems for the AI and change the way each image looks. And since we're going for consistency in the stack, I'm going to instead choose to mask with the linear gradient. 
And again, this is one of those choices that you kind of make to either use a, a particular step or not use a step. And in this case, I'm choosing not to use the landscape AI. I'm going to go with the trusty old linear gradient. And I'm going to invert and duplicate this one for the ground. Pull it down just a little bit. So now that I've got my masks built, I'm going to name this one sky and this one ground so that we keep everything consistent. I'm going to run through my normal process. I'm going to add some contrast in my sky, drop the highlights out, darken the shadows a bit, push the whites up, drop the black point. I'm going to add a bit of texture in, some clarity, and finally some dehaze. And I'm going to adjust my mask down just a little bit. There were a lot of clouds on the horizon and it's affecting them a little bit more than I would like. So now I'm going to switch to the ground. Again, I'm going to put a little bit of contrast in. I'm actually going to push some highlights up because I'd like to get these waves and the sand in, bring the shadows up, bring the overall exposure up just a touch. The whites because I really like the waves. I'm going to leave the black point alone and I'm going to warm this sand up just a little bit. Put in some texture and a little bit of clarity. I'm going to, I'm going to put in just a little bit of dehaze. My next step is to select all three images and synchronize. We're going to make sure that we're syncing the masking and synchronize. And that one ran pretty fast. I think it ran pretty fast because I've already done this once. And now we have our images ready for stacking. Ready to export for stacking. We're going to export these images. Uh, I'm going to use Beach Selfie 2 because I've already done it once. Give it a name. I'm going to run it export as a TIFF file with a resolution of 300. That's about it. And we're done. So once this finishes exporting, we're going to launch Starry Landscape Stacker. It's going to immediately ask us which images that we'd like to work with. And we are going to work on our working drive. These were shot in February. I'm going to choose all three images. <clears throat> once they're loaded, they're going to confirm that they're light frames. And I've got some shiny stuff on the beach. So it's tricking the algorithm. I'm going to run a nice line across my horizon and make sure I get the corners. Now we're going to find sky. Looks like it's done a reasonably good job. Align and composite. Now for this one, I think I'm going to choose the minimum value. The others put just a little bit too much light in it. And actually you see the middle ones starting to put this airplane in that was sneaking through my shot. So I'm going to run with minimum value and we're going to save the current image. Now I'm going to save that back into my image files for that date and time. We're going to click save. Now I'm not going to do a full save out because I found that it can confuse the computer if I throw those duplicate files in there. And this is my stacked image very little noise and the only other thing I'm going to do is because I did not run the lens correction originally I'm going to come in and adjust the distortion just a little bit I want to make sure we use a crop constraint and fix the vignette because I didn't do the lens correction in the beginning I'm going to have to do a manual lens correction, which is what I just did. Now from here, it's a simple matter of exporting into Photoshop. And I'm not going to do that full process, but this is my final image. Off of just three images, a really crisp, clean nightscape using AI noise reduction and stacking. For me, this is actually an image of one of my favorite times to capture the Milky Way. This is in February, while it's still low across the horizon, 
and the glow that you can see out there is those first rays of sunshine breaking over the curve of the earth. This is right as things go from night into astro twilight. Like I said, hands down one of my most favorite times to capture the Milky Way. I hope you got something out of this video. Please remember to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Now, get out there, capture some magic. <laughs>